MG Rob back with you. It looks like the channel is hitting another milestone. 250 subscribers. So it's time to break out those 3H drive party favors. So. Fuck, like they don't make them quite like they used to, eh? Of course, it is getting kind of old. I've had this one probably 15 years or so. At any rate, channel's growing a little bit. And uh, we're getting there. But in this video, we've got ourselves another MGB to work on. So this is a 1976 MGB. And it needs rack boots and tie rod ends put on it. So we just need to get this thing up in the air and we can get the wheels off and get started. So as you can see, obviously the rack boots are pretty much toast. And this one side boot's completely missing off the tie rod end. Now this one's still there, but they come in sets, so why not replace them in sets, right? All right, so we're going to start out by taking off the um, tie rod end. What I like to do first usually is go ahead and loosen up the nut here. Just get where it it's loose. Now I've already wire brushed the, the threads here. I want to wire brush the threads. And I got this nifty little tool here. Some parts is as easy as that. No more beating the snot out on or taking a pickle fork to them. And then we want to mark this. Lumber crowns work great. We want to mark this here. Now, and normally what I do is mark this too. That way you can just count them. You want to, as you unspin it, you want to count the number of turns. Now, of course, since I'm not putting these back on, it won't be exact, but it'll be really close. But if you were just doing boots without the um, tie rod ends, then you just count the number of turns off and then put it back on and line your marks back. And a half. Usually they're right around 16 turns. And in this case, you know, of course, you want to take off the nut too. Sometimes these things can get frozen on there pretty good. I've had them tight enough or, or crusty enough where I've had to go in there with a cutoff wheel and cut through the side of these things to get them to come off. So we'll now I'll move to the other side. I'll get that side done, and then we'll come back and get this wood off. All right. All right, so the clamps, I already took this off. I screwed up and didn't get footage of it. But you want to make sure you don't use too small of a screwdriver to take these screws out. Keep a number two to get a hold of that really good. Now the way these clamps are made, they got square nuts in them, and they'll engage into this little flat here. So as you're trying to take them loose, that nut will come out of there, and you got to keep you got to hold pressure and keep it up into there to keep it engaged as you're unscrewing it. Now from the factory, they put these to where they're facing up, which so you got to use a really short screwdriver to get in there to get them loose. Now the new ones can come with a variety of different clamps over the years. 
Um, sometimes the clamps are the same style clamps, but maybe a little wider, like in this case on the end here. This is actually a fuel line clamp for a fuel injection hose. It's just a little bit wider, so you've got to play with that a little bit as you're clamping it to make it stay there. And the bigger clamps evidently are no longer available. So they're giving you worm style hose clamps nowadays. Now this changes every year. Uh, next year you might buy a set that might have the right style clamps in it again. Uh, so there's been times I've seen them come with just zip ties. So I always suggest doing your best to preserve the original clamps because you may end up reusing them. So when I put them on, I like to position the clamps so that the screws are this way to get at them rather than up that way. It makes it a little bit easier to work with them. And there is a little flat spot right here, well, a smaller spot right there for that, for this to actually set into for the clamping it. So you want to leave this clamp loose enough to where you can get this over. Sometimes they can be a, sometimes they'll slip right over nice and easy, and sometimes you got to work them over. And then you just tighten that clamp and then bring this one up and put that clamp on. All right, so we run the nut on far enough to make sure that you're not going to run into it. And then put this on the same number of turns as the old one you took off. Now that doesn't mean it's going to be perfect because it's a new one, but it should be close. And if you get it through here, and you find the new ones have nylock nuts on them, which the old ones did too. But if you have an air impact, that's no big deal. You can just zip and boom them on. But if you're not, if you don't have an air impact, you can just give it a couple little wraps like that. And nine times out of ten, that will be enough to hold that, keep it from spinning while you tighten it. Quiet on the set. All right, so these do take 80W90 gear oil. And the way I like to fill them up myself is you can take this plate off here. Which has two bolts, two 5 16 bolts, so it'll be a half inch wrench. And underneath of that, You'll find yeah, there's some shims. Now, if your steering rack is loose, if you know have a noticeable amount of slop in your steering, you can actually take one of these shims out when you go to put it back together, and that'll tighten things up a bit. So then you got to take this. Oh, there's another. And you take this out which you can take a little bit of a just lightly grab a hold of this and just lift it straight out this is the damper now inside here is also a spring and another wear piece Now these things take, um, I think it was a pint and a half, as I remember correctly. What I usually do is I got this that I use just for this, and I've actually bent the end to have more of an angle, more of a hooked end on it. And I fill this thing up about three quarters of the way full, and when I'm out, that's the right amount of fluid. And you just put it in through here. Now you can't just 
dump it in really fast because the um, you'll just run it out all over the place. It's got to have time to work to run in, and you can turn, you can move the string back and forth a little bit as you're doing it to help help it. You just take your time and just put it in until you got about a pint and a half in there. Which for those of us who don't like talking in pints, that's a cup and a half. So now once you got enough oil in there, one thing I like to do is I take a little dab of grease. Just put a little dab of grease on this. That keeps that from wanting to slip out as you're putting it back in. And the grease won't hurt anything in the rack. And then, of course, you'll line this up with the rack. And then just put your shims and the cap back on it. All right, so the way that I check toe-in, which is pretty much the only adjustment on these things, is I have these bars that I made many years ago. I actually originally made them for my dad when he was servicing cars regularly. I got one on the other side of the car already. So we just put this to where it's about the same place on the tire. So these, you see these bars sitting about the same spot on the you get two tape measures that are the same, preferably same brand, because usually within brands they're accurate to each other most of the time. But between brands they may not be. So we run it through there, and I got my I got a helper over there who's hooking it for me. Through the little slots here. And just take it through the slot and then measure it, which we got 58 and 5 or 9 sixteenths at one end and 58 and uh, about 13 at the uh, at the front, which means it's towed out a little bit, and we don't want that. There let go. So, I've already drove it down the road to see that the steering wheel is centered. So then I'll get underneath there and adjust each one of them in just a little bit and then recheck it. And I'll keep, and then every time you do that, you want to roll the car back and then forward again and then put the bars back under it to get an accurate reading. And I'll set it until it's about a sixteenth towed in on my bars here and then we'll be good to go. All right, so that's rack boots and tie rod ends on MGB. Now this covers all years MGBs and that never changed. And it's very similar on you know midgets and other cars too. So once again, as always, if you like what I'm doing, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when my new videos come online. So this is MG Rob. Later.